Hello, everybody. Thank you very much. It's great to have you at the White House. And I just wanted to pass on word that Otto Warmbier has just passed away. He spent a year and a half in North Korea. A lot of bad things happened. But at least we got him home to be with his parents, where they were so happy to see him, even though he was in very tough condition. But he just passed away a little while ago. It's a brutal regime, and we'll be able to handle it. But I want to thank you all for being here, special people. I'm thr really thrilled to welcome many of you for the first time, and certainly the first time meeting as the American Technology Council. We're joined by an incredible group of leaders on the absolute cutting edge of innovation, including many CEOs from the world's most successful businesses. We have approximately $3.5 trillion of market value in this room, but that's almost the exact number that we've created since my election. In fact, I think we have you beat by a little bit, which is a pretty good number. But I, I congratulate you all. You've done an amazing job. Thank you for lending your time and your talent to the American people. A lot of ideas have come out of the room today, and a lot of ideas will over the next short period of time. I also want to welcome Secretary Mnuchin, Secretary Kelly, Administrator Verma, and my Budget Director, Mick Mulvaney. Thank you all. Doing a great job. I want to thank Jared and Chris, Chris Liddell, for assembling such a spectacular group of people. They're working very, very hard. I want to thank Ivanka for working so hard on it. It's a real passion. Our goal is to lead a sweeping transformation of the federal government's technology that will deliver dramatically better services for citizens, stronger protection from cyber attacks, which we were just discussing in the Oval Office with a little bit smaller group. That's a big, that's a big problem. There's no question about it. We're going to be working on it. We're going to solve the problem and up to a trillion dollars in savings for taxpayers over the next 10 years. Over a trillion. We're embracing big change, bold thinking, and outsider perspectives to transform government and make it the way it should be, and at far less cost. My administration's already taken very historic steps to modernize critical IT systems and make government more transparent as an example, you're seeing what we're doing with the airports, with all of the billions and billions of dollars that has, have been spent on planes flying all in the wrong directions. We're getting a change. They spent many billions of dollars, and we are getting that whole system fixed. Money wasted over the last six or seven years. Billions. VA Secretary Shilkin recently announced that we're up grading technology to allow the seamless transfer of veterans' medical records from the Defense Department, which has been a huge problem for decades and decades for our great veterans. We'll have it fixed very soon, but it's been a problem for many, many decades. Across government, we're fixing problems in months that others have not fixed in many, many years. And we're just getting started. Fifty years ago, our government drove the innovation that inspired the world and put Americans on the moon. Today, many of our agencies rely on painfully outdated technology. And yet, we have the greatest people in technology that the world has ever seen right here with us in this room. And most of them are just nodding as I say that. They're actually agreeing with me, which — that's interesting, Eric, right? Government needs to catch up with the technology revolution. We're going to change that with the help of great American businesses like the people assembled. The businesses represented here today employ hundreds of thousands of American workers. Your innovation has shaped the modern world and created millions of jobs. America should be the global leader in government technology, just as we are in every other aspect. And we are 
going to start our big edge again in technology, such an important industry. I view it from the standpoint of jobs and other things. You view it somewhat differently, but we're all in the same ballpark. It's so important. So important. My administration is embracing a new spirit of innovation that will make life better for all Americans. And when it comes to what we're here for today, American technology, we're working very diligently with everybody, including Congress, on immigration so that you can get the people you want in your companies. And it's been a tremendous problem that you've had over the past long period of time. So we're working very hard on that, and we'll be able to solve that problem. I want to thank everyone in the room for lending your time again. And what I'd like to do is maybe just go around the room briefly and just introduce yourself and perhaps the name of your company. We won't go with too many long speeches, but we'll maybe just uh, We'll start with our wonderful, great genius from Microsoft who has done one hell of a job. Congratulations on the job you've done. Thank Go you. ahead. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thanks for the opportunity today to spend the time, uh, both learn and contribute, uh, I think, to what is one of the most important dialogues, which is about modernizing our government uh, with the latest technology and so that the people of America can benefit from it. So I think the first thing I, I took away is how important an agenda it is to modernize technology. The second thing I think is for us to do our best work as an industry and in collaboration with the government to skill the people of the United States for the jobs of the future. Uh, technology will play a role both in creation of the jobs and the skills. Uh, and then lastly, I would say, that we also need uh, to increase American competitiveness. And the two things that the government can and sh has done is spending in big research. After all, all the technology that we have today is because it started, in fact, in the government and the research institutions you funded, as, as, as well as the enlightened immigration policy. Of course, I'm a beneficiary of that. And I hope that we continue uh, to be able to sort of really make sure that the American competitiveness is what helps us set policy for it. Well, thank you, Sachin. And perhaps we could keep it a little shorter than that, Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, uh, we might be here for a long time. Anyway, Jeff. All right, I will be uh, short. Uh, I think, uh, you know, when we met before in December, I encouraged this, uh, this administration that you could be the innovation administration. I'd like to see that kind of thinking continue. I applaud the formation of the Innovation Council and uh, thank Jared for doing that. Um, just a couple of things that you could certainly uh, focus on. One would be using commercial technologies wherever possible. Uh, I think you guys are already headed that way, but to leverage those will save taxpayers a lot of money. Uh, the second one is to continue to work hard on uh, figure out ways to retrain and upskill workers all over the U.S. We have a program at Amazon called Career Choice that's been doing that. We've already got 10,000 people in the program. Ivanka knows about this program. And then the third thing to keep your eye on, and I think it would be impossible to overstate this, is that the United States needs to, in every way, at every level, be working on machine learning and artificial intelligence. And that can be used in every part of government to improve the services that government provides to citizens. Good. Thank you, Jeff. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Next. Mr. President, I'm Rafael Reif. I'm MIT's president, and I'm delighted to be part of this terrific group. Uh, let me say that I applaud the focus of the administration and innovation. Uh, we are the most innovative country in the world today, and, uh, and the biggest issue we have uh, among ourselves right now, in my view, is to stay where we are as the most innovative country in the world 30 years from now and beyond. Well, my uncle was a professor there for a long time. So uh, I have a lot of respect for MIT, believe me. Great place. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay. Yes. I'm Carol Fold. I'm the chancellor at UNC. And I, too, am delighted to be here talking about innovation and workforce and talent. I mean, people have said what's really important, but when I think about the future, I think of all those kids that have such capacity, and what we're talking about is trying to take every resource we have to put to building that uh, innovation capacity for the country, and so it's great to be here. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. I'm uh, Tom Layton from Akamai. And, uh, we protect government websites from attackers, the majority of the government websites, including whitehouse.gov. 
The DNC could have used you. Well, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's an important job. And as you can imagine, there's a lot of folks out there trying to, to do bad things. And we're delighted to help with Good. the effort to save a trillion dollars and to secure the government. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. President. I'm Zach Bookman, CEO of a company called OpenGov. We, we have about 1,500 governments across the country as customers of our smart government cloud for budgeting and intelligence and open data. Uh, I'm really excited and honored to be uh, a part of today's conversation, and I applaud the work that, that Jared and so many others here are, are leading. It's clear to me that a lot of the thinking being applied is exactly what's been needed for a long time, and, and I think uh, it's, it's just the beginning of a lot of innovation. So. I think that's right. Thank you very much. Pat Gelsinger, CEO of VMware, also representing Dell here today. And uh, we're uh, some 70 plus percent of government workloads run in the VMware software today. So we're thrilled to be able to be in that role today. But more importantly, moving it forward to the cloud, uh, we think is critical. This potential in the cyber and really putting in place cyber hygiene. And ultimately, we as an industry are the product of the seed corn that was planted 30, 40, 50 years ago from the great research uh, investments of government and university. And we uh, deeply believe that we need to be planting those seed corns for our children and grandchildren. Great. Thank you. So, Mr. President, uh, Steve Mollenkoff, CEO of Qualcomm. We um, uh, thank you for the opportunity to contribute today. Uh, I would say our company works a lot on creating the base technology that allows big transitions to exist in cellular technologies. And uh, we're very excited about the upcoming 5G transition. It's going to be a big uh, job creator worldwide. And I think it's important that the U.S. stays uh, competitive, and we applaud the direction that the uh, administration is taking. Thank you very much. Mr. President, my name is John Doerr, chairman of Kleiner Perkins and of a startup company called Nuna. And Jeff would say that your administration will be the innovation administration. And I'd like to challenge it to also be the Data Liberation Administration. There's a trillion dollars worth of value locked up in government databases. And if we unlock that, we can transform health care, we can improve services for citizens, we can lower the costs of government. And if you set the data free, the entrepreneurs are going to do the rest. I'm particularly impressed by the thinking of Seema Verma over in your right. Medicare and Medicaid teams and look forward to working with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Michael Drake, president of The Ohio State University. Glad to be here today and very uh, happy to participate in this conversation. You know, we try to enable and empower and inspire young people to make a difference and being able to partner with our colleagues here around the table and with the government to do that in a better way uh, is something that we are very excited about. Thank you very much. I'm Ajay Banga, the CEO of MasterCard, and thank you for having us, Mr. President. I think in addition to what technology and the Internet of Things is going to do for all of us as an opportunity, <clears throat> side by side comes a tremendous responsibility on cybersecurity. And I think working that the right way with the right public-private partnerships, but also working it where the weakest link, which is small merchants and the individual consumer, get the right level of, of safety that they demand from us is really important. Okay. And I think the level of engagement in that dialogue today was very, very interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. President, Ginny Rometty from IBM. And, um, you know, I've had the pleasure of being in a number and in the honor of being in a number of these sessions. And I think it's worth noting that uh, the efforts around workforce development, around cybersecurity, around modernization, while they're difficult, in this short time, there has been progress already made. And so I would really uh, say on behalf of both, you know, Ivanka and Jared and Chris and Reed, um, those of us who've been in it from the beginning, I can already see and actions have been taken. So while these are difficult pro problems, I, I would just encourage us to keep going because I actually can see the change happening already. So I think this is a, a good sign of progress. Thank you, Jenny. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. President, thanks to Jared and Ivanka for sort of driving this so hard. I'm absolutely convinced that during your administration, there's going to be a huge explosion in new opportunities because of the platforms that are getting built in our industry. Those will create huge, very large new business opportunities for which we entrepreneurs, technical talent, immigration, and so forth that you understand. It can drive America very, very positively forward, and it's going to happen soon during your leadership. We will, Eric. Peter? Um, Mr. President, I'm uh, Peter Thiel. I'm a venture capitalist in Silicon Valley. Very honored to be here today with all, all these uh, uh, terrific people. Uh, I think that the tech industry is an industry that um, is doing well in America. 
and uh, we need to sort of make it do even better and give it the support, the regulatory support, uh, in all sorts of different ways. And I think uh, your administration's off to a terrific start in doing these things. Thank you, Peter. Thank you for your help. Appreciate it. Mr. President, I'm Shantanu Narayan. I'm CEO of Adobe. Uh, we're the company that's best known for Photoshop and PDF. Um, and two, uh, thank you for having us today. Two quick thank things. You. One is I think you're championing a culture of uh, innovation I think is going to be critical to our country's future leadership. And shared services for improving uh, government will, I believe, uh, drive a lot of efficiency. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Brian Krasavich. CEO of Intel. Um, you know, what, what I got out of today is first is a great honor to be here and, and a real pleasure, but also it was a great outreach, I think, between the private public partnerships that we can really drive innovation uh, much, much faster. And so uh, I hope today's just the start of what we can accomplish together. Thank you. A great company, and I appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'm deeply honored to be here. I'm Alex Karp, Palantir. Um, know many people in the room and in your White House from our work and have supported General McMaster on the front line and many of the special operations people in America and around the world. Uh, what's very gratifying about what you're uh, doing is the focus on getting more output for the input, which I don't think there's been a, 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 a deep focus on in the past. And I'm really grateful to your staff for pushing that forward. We focused on rooting out waste, fraud, and abuse in the government, which is something I think all Americans would welcome. And I thank you for your efforts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Bill McDermott from SAP. It's been a great pleasure working with your team on the uh, intellectual renewal of America. Uh, we've had the opportunity, the great opportunity, to work with the Army, the Navy, even states like Indiana, and in driving results. And I know you want to drive results. So in addition to the trillion in costs we can take out, probably we can add another two trillion on the numerator in terms of digital business by getting the public and the private sector in full cooperation under your administration. Look forward to supporting you every way I can. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you, Mr. It. President. Hi, I'm Kyron Skinner. I think you know me from the campaign um, on the foreign and diplomacy side and from transition as well. Um, but I'm also a professor at Carnegie Mellon University um, where I work on international security issues, cybersecurity with the engineers and computer scientists. And what I liked most about today is that we talked about recreating the ecosystem of the early decades of the Cold War between government, among government, um, the private sector, and the university um, to um, regenerate our economy and create innovation. I'm also a fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford, and they'll get mad at me if I don't mention that. That's good. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm Julie Sweep, uh, CEO of North America for Accenture. Uh, the level of discourse and enthusiasm in the sessions today, which were very productive, is a powerful reminder of the importance of collaboration. And I think two um, very clear themes were that modernizing the government is not about technology, it is about outcomes for our citizens. And second is the investment also in our great public servants that this will be bring about and the opportunities for the many people who serve um, in the federal government today to help them bring better services and outcomes for the citizens, and those are both very important and exciting themes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Safra Katz, I'm CEO of Oracle. We had an absolutely tremendous day working together. It, the partnership between academia, the government, and commercial enterprises is such a powerful combination together with leadership, which is critical for real success. And you had volunteers from all sides and a lot of people working already and raring to go for the next level. So thank you. Thank you, Sam. I'm Tim Cook from Apple. Uh, the U.S. should have the most modern government in the world, and today it doesn't. Uh, and it's great to see the effort that Jared is putting in in working on things that will pay back in five and 10 and 20 years. The, the government should be uh, focused on its citizens and the services of the government should be measured on how uh, pleased the citizens are with receiving those services. That basic premise is not how it's done today. And so I would really encourage 
uh, you to uh, ask the cabinet how they're measuring their, their parts of government and what they're doing to serve the citizens that they're, they're meant to do. Secondly, totally unrelated, but something I feel very passionate about, coding should be a requirement in every public school. We have a huge uh, deficit in the uh, skills that we need today versus uh, the skills that are there. And we're, we're uh, trying to do our part, or hopefully more than our part, in doing that. But I think uh, leadership from government is also key. Thank you very much, Tim. Appreciate it. And appreciate all you're doing over the last number of months for uh, jobs. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you.